morning guys it's greg here aka ny prepper it is saturday march 16th 2024 and i have some breaking news to share with you guys right now it is 2208 eastern time here in the united states and we have some major breaking news coming in from europe so apparently russia was planning to assassinate the british defense secretary grant shapps this was reported by the Times of the UK, and they said that he had to abandon a trip to Ukraine after credible intelligence warned of a targeted missile threat. Okay, so here on the screen is an excerpt from the UK Times article about this situation. So the defense secretary of the UK. Grant Shapps was forced to abandon a trip to Odessa after British intelligence warned of a credible targeted missile threat. And remember two weeks ago when Zelensky met the Greek prime minister in Odessa, they nearly killed Zelensky and the Greek prime minister. They launched a missile at them and it missed them by like, I don't know, 150 yards or something like that so this is crazy guys and remember just a few days ago the plane of grant shaps came under heavy jamming by the russians when he was flying to poland and also remember a few days ago when the polish president went to the u.s he had trouble with his plane when he was trying to fly back to europe there was a malfunction with some of the avionics and he had to fly back on a separate plane. So this is very concerning, guys. And we have some breaking news coming from the Finnish foreign minister, Alina Valtonen, saying that Finland is not going to rule out sending troops to Ukraine. She said, we are not sending any troops now, but this option cannot be ruled out because we never know how serious the situation will become. Okay, so. Finland is now saying that they could deploy troops to Ukraine depending on how serious the situation becomes, and they have not ruled it out. And what would warrant Finland to send troops to Ukraine? Well, like I said, if it looks like Russia is going to get close to the capital, or if they're going to get close to the major port city of Odessa, that's when I think Finland and a bunch of NATO countries will get together and send troops into Ukraine to prevent Russia from capturing the capital or the main port city. Okay, and this is coming just a week after Emmanuel Macron tripled down on his threats to send troops to Ukraine. And he met with the Prime Minister of Poland and the Chancellor of Germany in a trilateral meeting on Friday where they all agreed that there are no limits and that they will do whatever is necessary to make sure Russia does not win the war. So this is very, very serious, guys. And a viewer from Germany sent me this screenshot from their cell phone showing an emergency alert system test by the German government on the 14th of this month, two days ago, Friday at 1100 hours local time in Bavaria, Germany. Apparently, the federal state of Bavaria and North Rhine-Westphalia tested their emergency alert system test, which is uncommon because they already did one a few months ago, and they normally only do these tests every 12 months. And this person told me that it's very uncommon to see two of these tests within a six-month period. The tests included uh, functionality of sirens, civil warning apps, radio broadcast warnings, and cell broadcast alerts. So they were testing air raid sirens. They were testing civil warning apps, radio broadcasts, cell broadcasts. This is a comprehensive emergency alert system test that went on in the Bavaria part of Germany. Okay, so this could be related to Germany putting their Taurus missiles on full alert. They announced that a few days ago that they put their Taurus missiles on combat alert due to external threat. So it looks like Germany is concerned about a war with Russia. 
And there was another factory attacked by Ukrainian drones in Russia today. Uh, here we have some video footage coming from the Krasnodar Krai. This is right near the Kerch Bridge in Slavyansk na Kubani. And uh, this factory uh, caught fire. Let me just play this video for you. You can actually hear the drones in the background. You can hear the humming noise of the drone propeller. Daddy. So the Ukrainians continue to hit Russian oil refineries, fuel depots, factories. And here we have a picture showing all of the oil refineries and fuel depots that the Ukrainians have hit in the last week. You can see 15 oil refineries and fuel depots hit in the last week, and some of them really far away as far as St. Petersburg. Okay, so very interesting. And this apparently has affected Russia's oil production by 10%. They've lost 10% of their oil production. And Belarusian dictator Alexander Lukashenko apparently held a phone call with Russian dictator Vladimir Putin about bilateral relations and the situation in the region today. Okay. So very concerning. And I want to remind you guys that the Belarusian army has been put on combat readiness and they're doing live fire exercises across the entire country. And they've moved tanks and BMPs to the border of Lithuania, just 10 kilometers from the border of Lithuania, right near Vilnius, the capital of Lithuania. And also Russia moved tactical nuclear weapons as well as tactical nuclear warheads to Belarus. This was confirmed a few days ago by Western media. The Italian defense minister said that Europe needs a clear and unified strategy against Russia. Here we have some video footage coming out of one of the Russian polling places. And this lady here tries to uh, set fire to the polling place. Check this out. You can see she threw this uh, paper or something or maybe a small Molotov cocktail to uh, try to catch the whole polling place on fire. Very, very interesting. And this update was sponsored by My Patriot Supply. Guys, My Patriot Supply has brought back their 25% discount on their three-month emergency food supply. And to get the discount, you got to use the link preparewithnyprepper.com. And the link is in the description below this video. But this three-month emergency food supply has a 25-year shelf life. It includes over 2,000 calories per day. Breakfasts, lunches, dinners, drinks, and snacks all contained within six rugged water-resistant buckets. And free shipping is included. So use the link preparewithnyprepper.com to get $200 off or 25% off of the My Patriot Supply 3-month emergency food supply. The link is in the description below this video. And what you're looking at here is video footage coming out of Belarus showing over 3,000 Belarusian trucks that are being held up at the Polish border. Apparently, Poland has closed down another border crossing. So this is absolutely insane. Look at all these trucks here that Poland is now holding up in Belarus from uh, crossing into the EU. And apparently there have been cyber attacks today on the Russian electronic voting systems and also on systems of the United Russia Party, which is Putin's party. The Russian government is blaming America and Britain for these cyber attacks. And I want to show you guys the location of some of these T-72s and BMPs that have been spotted just a few kilometers from the border with Lithuania. They were seen at the Ashmiani train station. 
Apparently, the 19th Mechanized Brigade was unloading their T-72s and BMPs. Now, BMPs are amphibious fighting vehicles, so they're very good at crossing swamps and bodies of water, and that's exactly what you would need in this part of the world because there are a lot of wetlands in the Baltic countries, in Poland, and in Belarus, so they could easily get across those bodies of water when they make their push into Lithuania. So it looks like what's going to happen, this is just my opinion, I could be wrong. I hope it doesn't happen this way, but they're going to be drafting 300,000 troops by June 1st. When they send those 300,000 troops to Ukraine, I think what they're going to try to do is they're going to try to make a breakthrough by Donetsk and try to go deep into Ukraine, like towards the Dnipropetrovsk and then eventually towards Kiev. They might come down from Belarus towards Kiev again and try to go for the capital again from the north direction. But I also think that they're going to potentially invade Lithuania from Belarus to open up another front for NATO. And this is very serious, guys. We could see basically NATO fighting Belarus slash Russia. This would be good for Russia because Russia doesn't have to get involved. Belarus is going to be the one that's invading Lithuania. It's not going to be Russia. It's going to be Belarus. And so Russia is not going to be directly fighting with Lithuania as far as we know. Obviously, the Russian troops are going to be there, but they're going to be disguised as Belarusian troops. Okay, so that's what I'm concerned about. They're also doing a territorial defense drill in April just 40 kilometers from the Lithuanian border. And here we have some pictures of some training exercises going on in Belarus right now. You can see, look at all these BMPs, guys. Dozens and dozens of BMPs. This is what you would need if you were making a move on Lithuania or Latvia or northeastern Poland due to all of the boggy terrain. These BMPs are perfect because they're light, they're small, and they can fit through forests and boggy areas, okay? So this is extremely, extremely concerning. It looks like Belarus and Russia are going to invade Lithuania very soon. And apparently Dmitry Medvedev threatened the Latvian president and he also said that Latvia is a non-existent country. This is being reported by the Institute for the Study of War. Russian Security Council Deputy Chairperson Dmitry Medvedev, he's the former president of Russia, to question the sovereignty of Latvia, a NATO member state, and threatened Latvian President Edgars Rinkovits following Medvedev's March 14 call for the total elimination of Ukraine and Ukraine's absorption into Russia under Medvedev's peace formula. Medvedev threatened Rinkovic's life in a post on March 15th and claimed that Russia will hang Rinkovic's alongside the current Nazi Ukrainian government for wishing for the death of Russia. Medvedev also claimed that Latvia is a non-existent country the Institute for the Study of War previously noted that Medvedev's sardonic and extreme March 14 peace formula more explicitly outlines real and central elements of the Kremlin's ideology and stated war aims and justifications. Medvedev's March 15th post is a similarly explicit presentation of the Kremlin's ideological framing of the war in Ukraine as part of Russia's longer-term conflict with the West and NATO that Putin has previously alluded to by claiming that Russia is fighting a geopolitical Nazi force gaining power in the West. Medvedev's threats against Rinkovics and the current Ukrainian government follow previous Kremlin efforts to assert its right contrary to international law, to enforce Russian federal law on officials of NATO, member, and former Soviet states for actions taken within the territory of their own countries where Russian courts have no jurisdiction. So this is crazy, guys. Tensions between Latvia and Russia are exploding. And here we have a picture showing some of the GPS jamming going on in the Baltics. You can see a massive amount of 
severe GPS jamming over Poland and the Baltic Sea. Look at this, guys. The entire northern half of Poland is experiencing a high amount of GPS jamming, including Warsaw, the capital. And you can even see southern Sweden and the Baltic Sea here are experiencing a massive amount of jamming and also Estonia as well. Lots of jamming over Estonia. Obviously, Russia is responsible for that because why would NATO jam their own GPS? It wouldn't make any sense. And uh, Kaliningrad is right here, so they can easily jam this whole area. Okay. And here we have some video footage that was posted by Russian sources showing uh, Leopard 2A6 that was captured by the Russian military in Avdivka. And they also captured a Bradley infantry fighting vehicle. So this is not good, guys. Russia is now going to be able to deconstruct this tank and figure out uh, all of the uh, armor and inner workings of the tank, which are going to help them to uh, prepare for a war against us, a land war. Okay, here's some more uh, footage of that uh, tank there. And then here we have the Bradley. Check that out. You can actually see some shrapnel holes in the uh, armor of the Bradley. Okay, that's the uh, explosive reactive armor, actually. So this isn't the actual hull of the tank. It's just the explosive reactive armor. But um, very, very concerning, guys. There's the Bradley right there. Such a shame that they had to abandon that uh, Bradley. I mean, that's still a good piece of equipment. You can fix it up. It wasn't totally destroyed. It looks like it just maybe needs a new axle. But very serious, guys. Russia now has a Bradley and a Leopard 2 A6 in their possession. And Finland has stopped allowing cars with Russian license plates from driving into Finland. Drivers with cars registered in Russia will no longer be able to drive them without a special permit starting today, Saturday, the 16th of March. And all Baltic countries have now banned the entry of cars with Russian license plates. Poland, Finland, Norway, and Bulgaria have also introduced such bans. The Lithuanian Customs Department confiscated the first car with Russian license plates at the Medininkai checkpoint on the Lithuanian-Belarusian border on March 11th. So very interesting. We have a U.S. missile detector plane patrolling the Sea of Japan tonight. This is probably the fourth night in a row that it's been flying over the Sea of Japan. So that tells me that they're preparing for another North Korean missile test, which could be imminent. And there's also an AWACS plane here and an aerial refueler that was with that missile detector. This is a RC-135 Cobra Ball. And these planes specialize in detecting and tracking missiles. And here we have a picture coming out of Damascus, Syria, after a massive Israeli airstrike in Damascus. Look at the sky. It's just totally orange. And we know that the Bible says that Israel's going to level Damascus, okay? Damascus will become a ruinous heap. That's from the book of Isaiah. So that's pretty much it for this one, guys. I will be back tomorrow with more breaking news. And I do expect those Russian partisans to conduct more actions in Russia over the next few days. They have set up a temporary humanitarian pause in Russia for civilians to evacuate from Belgorod and Kursk, but I think they're going to really step up their attacks in the coming days. So I'll be covering that and I will go live if anything happens, but I do think that this year is the year that we're going to really see a massive escalation take place. I think Belarus is preparing to invade Lithuania and open up another front for NATO, give something for NATO to focus on. And then Russia is going to send 300,000 troops to the front lines to make some serious gains, potentially to break through near Donetsk, potentially to extend the front line further north in Zaporizhia, potentially to go for Kiev from the north. 
and also potentially to go for Odessa. We have multiple European countries now saying that they're not going to rule out sending troops into Ukraine. We had very high profile meetings last week. We had the Polish president and the Polish prime minister meet with Biden in the White House. And Poland uh, is going to be buying thousands of the best missiles that America has. They're going to be purchasing over 800 JSAM extended range missiles. These are cruise missiles that are launched from fighter jets that have a range of 600 miles or more, giving Poland the capability to strike deep into Russia, 600 miles, guys, that could theoretically allow them to reach even Moscow. And those missiles have a thousand pound warhead and they also have earth penetrating warheads for destroying bunkers. 800 of those purchased by Poland and then also uh, 2,000 Hellfire missiles and 100 Apache helicopters. This was all approved this past week when Poland uh, sent their president and prime minister to the U.S. So it's clear that NATO is gearing up for war with Russia. Okay, so get prepared. Make sure you have a nuclear war survival plan. And I encourage you guys to check out my website, newyorkprepper.com. And I have a references section where I have all kinds of prepping and nuclear war survival and survival references. Here I have best bug out locations in America, nuclear war targets in Europe, nuclear war targets in Canada, nuclear war targets in America. But I just recently posted fallout shelter locations for rural and urban areas. This is a cheat sheet just listing some good examples of fallout shelters that you can use if let's say you don't have a basement or you live in an area that doesn't have basements here are some alternatives for you so check it out okay and other than that i will be back tomorrow so take care god bless and don't forget the three p's prepare practice and persevere